All right, just watch over that there, Mark. Welcome, Bill. Hi, thank you, Indy. Well, I brought some uh, corn with me. Some people call it maize. Uh, that's about a square yard of maize. And it's uh, like the maize uh, that's grown in East Africa, where, of course, almost all the farmers have very small plots of land. They work with less than a hectare, which is about two acres, so just mm, about 12,000 times as much as what's sitting right there. As Ndidi said, the Green Revolution was a miracle. It raised productivity of three key cereal crops, but primarily for Asia. It didn't do a good job on the ecosystems in Africa or the wide variety of crops used there. And so the low productivity, uh, less than a quarter of uh, productivity in rich countries, is not enough uh, to feed Africa. So amazingly, despite low land costs, low labor costs, Sub-Saharan Africa still imports billions of dollars of crops every year from all over the world. And that's the reason why the war in Ukraine is now causing a hunger crisis over 6,000 miles away in the heart of Africa. When we lose those food shipments, there's no capacity to grow more food. And it's more than uh, just a market shock. Uh, we have malnutrition. In fact, uh, we have the twin challenges of both population growth and climate change that's pushing down the productivity that we have on those farms today. Uh, and so this is, is quite alarming. Uh, just let's look at a, a maize farmer. Uh, maize uh, would be about 30% of all the calories consumed in sub-Saharan Africa. So very, very key cereal crop. But as temperature comes in, uh, it is sensitive to that temperature. Uh, for every degree above 30 degrees Celsius, you have the uh, growing process breaking down more and more. Uh, and so each of those degrees per day uh, cuts your yield by 1%. In other words, even if it was just five days at 35 degrees centigrade, uh, you'd have a 25% uh, productivity reduction. And that's what's projected just by the end of the decade. Uh, and if you go out to 2040, 2050, 2060, it gets substantially worse because even in the best case, you know, climate uh, temperature increases are continuing. The map here is uh, key. It shows you the projected heat stress. And what you can see is that particularly that central band, uh, the Sahel and south of the Sahel here, is terrible. And it's not just maize. Uh, livestock uh, and all the other crops are very temperature sensitive as well. And so if we just let this continue, uh, we'll be moving away uh, from that green revolution to sort of a brown regression where you have lots of crops dying uh, because of drought and heat effects. And even in the, the next decade, uh, that will increase hunger. And if you let it go on, uh, you'd have huge amounts of starvation. Uh, the projection uh, just for 2030 uh, is 32 million more hungry people. Uh, and so that's an incredible tragedy. Most of that uh, is going to be women and children. When you have food shortages, they're the ones that suffer most. And we see that in the relative rates of of malnutrition. And so as indeed he said, you know, what can we do? Uh, you know, this is an unacceptable uh, situation. What is the force we can use to take that 32 million, uh, not only get rid of it, but push uh, the graph of uh, the number of people without enough food uh, down uh, dramatically? And the answer is uh, innovation. Um, and we have some good examples uh, from the past where we did uh, drive innovation. Uh, one example is that 14 years ago, uh, the Gates Foundation funded a group of researchers in Africa uh, to breed drought-tolerant varieties of maize. 
And this was a huge success. Uh, they called uh, this variety of maize they created. Uh, you can see the picture here. That's an ear of this drought uh, tago maize. And when they planted this uh, in a field next uh, to the traditional variety, they saw that drought tego could produce 66% more grain per acre. You know, that is very dramatic. Um, if we just say a small farmer uh, in Kenya, uh, that's enough to feed their family uh, for the whole year and to have excess maize uh, to sell for about $880, which is more than five months of average income. So these new crop varieties uh, can give us dramatic productivity uh, improvements, more than doubling uh, to get up to almost rich countries' levels of, of, of productivity. Uh, so we really need to do this. Uh, we need to do it for all the ecosystems and all the key crops, uh, because this is the trend, the one thing that will push against that population and climate change and actually bring down uh, the number of of hungry people. So let's go back, uh, look at our hunger prediction uh, and see, you know, climate change pushing up uh, and then uh, innovation uh, is the thing that uh, can actually push that down and, and bring uh, substantial reductions uh, in those hunger level. Now, the seeds are absolutely critical. Without that, you don't get there. But you know, that's only one input uh, to the system. Uh, we need to educate farmers. Uh, we need to get them credit. We need to get them uh, fertilizer. Uh, and, you know, they, these things in combination are what drive that productivity. Climate change, of course, was in no way caused uh, by these countries, and particularly uh, not by these farmers. Uh, the goal of mitigation uh, is a goal for really the middle-income and rich countries. Uh, but uh, we could say they owe it uh, to these countries uh, to drive this innovation. Uh, if you raise these productivities, uh, that's far, far better uh, than just sending food aid. In fact, you know, let's look at the relative investments we make in those two categories. Uh, there's over six and a half billion, it's a big number, big red column, uh, spent on food aid. Uh, and of course, that's very important. When you've got an acute situation, uh, the fact that that uh, system is there uh, is very helpful. But if you say, what are we doing to avoid that, uh, you know, to systemically get enough food uh, to be made right where it's needed, uh, that investment is actually quite small. Uh, it's not even at its peak. It was higher in the past. Uh, it's 890 million, which is only 14%. Uh, and we see that given the science, a lot of the science comes to us from medical science. Fortunately, plant genes and uh, human genes are the same. And so the opportunity for very dramatic improvements uh, with the science budget uh, getting up to $2 billion uh, is that we can do even better uh, than what happened with the Green Revolution uh, last time. And so we're going to talk about uh, innovation. We've got three really great experts uh, to talk to you about a variety of things we need to do uh, in food systems. And I hope uh, hearing these ideas uh, you'll have a sense of optimism about what we can do for the food system. Yes, climate change is uh, the greatest problem, the biggest threat to our food supply since the invention of agriculture. Uh, but we really do have the ability to adapt. We can develop the tools and the systems to make sure that people have an, enough to eat, even despite the negative effects of climate change. Thank you.